Welcome to section 9.6 day one, the quadratic formula. This is the last of five methods we are learning that we use to solve quadratic equations. So today's objective is to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So it says here the quadratic formula can be used to solve any quadratic equation that we're given. However, the quadratic formula is not always the easiest or the best way to solve an equation but it can solve everything uh, for quadratics. And we do have a formula. And the quadratic formula is that your x values, your intercept equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This is actually derived, this formula is actually derived using algebra from completing the square. I do not think you want me to go through that, but if you want to see what it looks like, how it, this quadratic formula came about, you can look in your book that does have the breakdown on how the quadratic formula was derived. So there's a way to remember this quadratic formula. You'll be using this for the next few years for sure, all the way into college if you go to college. Um, the quadratic formula, this song, will help you remember it. I know it sounds corny, but it does work, and the song is song to pop goes the weasel and the song goes like this and you should sing this along after i do the first one we're going to do this a few times the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and that's how the quadratic formula song is sung <laughs> let's try this again you should try this with me the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, like I said, it sounds corny, but this does work. We will sing it a few times as we go through the lesson today and tomorrow. It will help you memorize this. You do need to memorize this. You have to know this formula. I will ask you to write it out on your test. Here again, it says solve using the quadratic formula, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Again, sometimes it's going to ask for the tenth, sometimes it'll ask for the hundredth. We will do the tenth. That is what your book usually asks for. So all we do is we identify our A, our B, and our C, and we plug them in, and then we solve it. So when you're doing this, I'm going to show you what I need to see on your homework and what I should see on your quizzes and tests when you use the quadratic formula. So we have x is the opposite of b, so minus a minus 3. And yes, you can change it right to a plus right away. We have plus or minus the square root. The b is negative 3 squared minus 4 times the a. The a is 1. The c is negative 10. This is a key part. All of this is divided by 2 times a which is two times one. So I need to see that you're plugging this stuff in. Like I said, when you do the opposite of B, you can change it right away to a three. But I need to see that you're plugging the A's, the B's, and the C's in. We then simplify. So we have three plus or minus. And if you take what's inside the radical, you can do this in your calculator and take negative three squared minus four times one times negative 10. And in this case, you are going to find out that you get the square root of 49 all over 2. So I need to see this step 2. I need to see what the radical, the radicand, simplifies to. Then we have x equals, in this case, we get a perfect square, 49. So we have 3 plus or minus 7 over 2. And don't forget, we have two different equations. We have 3 minus 7 over 2, and we have 3 plus 7 divided by 2. And don't forget these are x equals. These are our intercepts. If we graph this, this is where it's going to cross the x axes. This simplifies to negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. We have 10 over 2, which is 5. So these are my solutions. Now this one, where I using a simple equation to demonstrate how the quadratic formula is used. Uh, this one is actually one we could have factored, and factoring it would have been way easier than going through this five-step process. 
But today we're learning the quadratic formula, so we're going to use a quadratic formula on, all, on everything we do. So make sure I see that first step. I need to see this. I need to see the radicand simplified. Then, depending on what happens, I need to see your two equations, though. You might have 3 minus some radical, 3 plus some radical. But I need to see the two equations and your final answers. All right, so I need to see all these things happening. One thing I would say is if you get a radical that's not a perfect square, do not round. Do not round until you get to the final answer. And I'll show you what I mean here coming up. So here we have our second quadratic. And it's 2x squared plus 7x equals 8. And we want to use the quadratic formula to do this. And like it says here on the top, it says be sure the quadratic equation is in standard form. We can only use the quadratic formula if the equation is in standard form equal to 0. Or you get y equals the quadratic. We cannot do it when it's in this form. We don't know where our a, b's, and c's are. It always has to be in standard form. We need to rewrite this so it's in standard form. So we are going to subtract 8 from both sides. And we get 2x squared plus 7x minus 8 equals 0. Now we have in standard form, we can use our quadratic formula. Remember, our quadratic formula is x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We're going to plug our numbers in. x is, our b is 7, so negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times the a times the c all over 2a. So I need to see your plugging the numbers in. Then I need to see your radical with the simplified inside. So we get, when you do this, you get 49, and the other part is 64. When you add them together, you get 113 all over 4. Now, we don't have a radical we can simplify. It's not a perfect square. So what I recommend is you actually set up two equations at this point. Do not take the square root of 113 and round it to the nearest tenth. If I'm asking you the nearest tenth to the nearest hundredth, that can give you wrong answers at the end. So do not round early. Wait till the end to do any rounding. What we have here now is x is negative 7 minus the square root of 113 over 4. And the other number we have is x is negative 7 plus the square of 113 all over 4. And then do these on your calculator. Here it doesn't say what to round to, so let's just go to the 10th like your book does. Um, we have negative 7 minus square root of 113 over 4. And if you put this in your calculator and round, you will get x is negative 4.4. The bottom one where we have negative 7 plus the square root of 113 over 4, we get 0 0.9. These are your solutions. All right, so that is the quadratic formula. Make sure before you use it that you put things in standard form. I recommend you write the equation out, the formula out, every time you use it until you memorize it. And we will be singing the Pop Goes the Weasel version of the song for a while to help you learn this because it is important to know this equation or this formula. I said that is all for 9.6 day one, the quadratic formula. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.